Yo, what's up guys? <clears throat> quick, where's my face? There I am. Uh, quick uh, market update for you before I go to the fucking gym and get huge. Um, yeah, so one of the things I want to do uh, more this year, and I know it's already fucking February 2024 flying by, um, is put a way bigger focus on my YouTube. Um, I'm just kind of getting burnt out from Twitter, uh, to be honest with you. I don't know what it is. Uh, I mean, maybe it's the fact that I've been on the platform for 10 years, um, but I feel like the bang for buck in terms of communicating with you guys, obviously the community, um, you know, being able to share stuff in video format, you know, relatively easily and fluidly. Um, and it's just a little more intimate. I have 400,000 followers on Twitter, like, the signal to noise ratio is just completely out of whack. Um, you know, I do a lot more shit posting there uh, than I do, um, you know, posting alpha. Like I, I used to post threads and, you know, educational uh, bits and bobs. And I've just kind of completely gone away from that. Maybe I'll try and recalibrate and, you know, re get into, you know, that kind of stuff. But it just doesn't seem like it's valued as much as it used to be. Um, it seems like it's much more about, you know, what's the new hottest meme coin that the influencer is going to dump on you anyways. Um, and you know, all other sorts of bullshit. So, you know, I think I'm slowly gonna, you know, try and transition more of my focus to YouTube. I enjoy the platform much more. I much prefer doing video content over written content. I am not a good writer, not great at articulating my thoughts and writing much better at just spewing shit at you high speed in the mic. Um, so I'm going to try and do more of that, some educational videos, uh, who knows what else, some random shit you guys might want to see. Maybe it's a day in the life, maybe it's me doing cool shit, but definitely a lot of market reviews and updates and, and things like that. So if you're into that, sounds good to you. Let me know in the comments if that's something that you know we think, uh, we think will be received well. I'd love to get to 50K. I'd love to get 100K on YouTube one day. Um, but uh, yeah, I got some other stuff planned, you know, talking with some other companies, maybe doing some sort of crypto variety show where I'm doing some live trading, I'm punting on some slots, I'm playing some video games, I don't know. But a lot more video content, uh, I think I'm going to try and do, you know, multiple videos a week. I think that's the key to growth is it can't be just the one stream a week. It's just not enough. Um, so with that being said, quick market update. Market's been pretty boring. Um, you guys know what my bias is. It hasn't changed. I've been, you know, kind of stuck on this for a while. Uh, you know, we had January's candle close. Get rid of all this random shit here. Um, January's candles closed, right? We swept out this high, uh, closed back within December's range. And uh, yeah, we had this kind of, you know, weekly SFP, and then we had a weekly SFP here, and we're kind of just diddling in the middle. Uh, and I've made, you know, four or five posts basically saying the same thing in every one. Don't get chopped up, you know, don't waste your money, you know, trying to trade trade this current price action the same way that you traded price action here. Um, you could long almost anything during 2023. And if you were patient enough, you were going to make money. And we're now kind of at an indecision point where perhaps the dynamics of the market, I mean, the market's changed, the way it's trading has changed volatility is way down we're not seeing these crazy pumps on all these big altcoins bitcoin is not just going up only um it's going sideways and really since december and you know kind of the whole etf um you know extravaganza not much has happened we're basically trading between 41 and 44.5k with a couple of deviations on either side and if you take this larger range which is december's range here and you bifurcate it the upper portion right we're just trading right in the middle of this sucker right here so um you know people are going to be getting chopped up doesn't mean you can't trade doesn't mean there's not going to be opportunities but if you're looking to just long every dip like you were from you know the summer until december uh you're not having as good of a time as you were uh and the last thing you want to do uh is give back gains that you made during this type of price action when things get a little trickier if you do not know how to trade in a range if you do not know how to trade a potential downtrend um, you're better off sitting on your hands and saving that dry powder and that mental capital because you know how crazy things were during this period in time 
things were going fucking nuts, right? So, um, you know, it felt like you couldn't sleep because you were missing an opportunity. It was just so volatile. You couldn't step away. Well, guess what? Now you can absolutely step away and there's a good chance prices within, you know, a couple of percent from when you went to sleep. I think when I went to sleep last night and woke up, price was at like the exact same level. Um, so, don't take that for granted. Um, I think it's a great opportunity if you've been going hard, if you've been grinding, take a break, get outside, relax, right? Um, you know, set some alerts for sure. And I'm not saying you can't be on screen trying to do shit, but just don't get chopped up. Don't let yourself give back money that you made here, hard earned money, big P&L gains here uh, during this because the dynamics and the way the market has been trading for the last eight, nine weeks definitely changed. Now, my bias has been pretty straightforward, right? I, I thought ETF was a fade. That was correct. Um, I'm still of the mindset that we trade down to here. So really, the question that I'm trying to figure out right now is, is when is that going to happen? Um, so we had this move up here, swept, I took a short here. Um, and then we came right back up. And I said, Okay, maybe uh, you know, we had this H1 sweep in here. I said, maybe we're going to get a move up. And I, I kind of drew this out in Telegram. I was thinking maybe we get something up into here, into this breaker, deeper into this fair value gap. And then this would be the lower high. And eventually, yes, I'm looking for price to trade down to 37 and lower. I do not think this is the low um, before higher prices. I do think we're going to trade below December's low. So similar to June's range, I think we're going to have a deviation on either side. Now, took a long, I think yesterday, um, based on the H12 sweep, we came back to the breaker. Um, so I had the H12 sweep here. Here's your breaker right here. So I had my bids here and I woke up instantly underwater. We stabbed down again. Now we're pushing up a little bit, but um, we put in a bearish H12 sweep um, here. So my bias is towards lower prices and I may get burnt here and we might end up pumping up here. Um, and if we do, guess what? I'm looking for shorts on any sort of move towards 45, 46 K. I'm looking to fade that. Uh, I'm looking to fade anything into this, any sort of move up into this. I'm looking to fade. However, because my bias is bearish, right? If you look at the, um, you know, the H 12 here, we have a high, we broke structure, right? There's, there's no doubt we are, we are in a downtrend here, um, you know, breaking. And yeah, okay, maybe we have an internal shift here, right? And we broke this high, but relative to this kind of dominant price leg, we're, we're in a downtrend, in my opinion. Or at least I'm looking at this as I'm looking at this as a bearish retracement. So what I'm trying to do is time. Is this the lower high? So I'm looking for this to play out, right? So I'm trying to time this. When is that lower high going to form? Right? So is this the lower high here? Right here? Or does it have one more push up and the lower high is going to be there? Either way, I'm looking to fade. But because we're bearish, uh, when I'm in a long, if I see a bearish H12 SFP, uh, I'm going to close my longs. And even if it pumps up and it goes to my target, yeah, I can be salty. I can be pissed. But you got to kind of follow, you got to have rules and you got to, you got to stick to your plan. And uh, this H12 SFP here uh, is potentially a clue that this is then going to roll over because if you zoom in here, right, we have a H1 breaker, H1 SFP here. So now I'm looking at this thing and I think, okay, maybe we get a push up here and then maybe this is further confirmation of downside. So that's kind of what I'm looking for here next. Um, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this this H12 sweep here and this entry was good. It never got deviated or I never would have gotten stopped out, right? The stop was here. Um, so maybe we do end up grinding up here and trading up into that range high again. You know what? And it is what it is. I, I, I took an L and uh, my next trade analysis was wrong. That's fine, right? I have no issue with being wrong, um, but Based on what I think is happening, I think we are going to trade lower. Um, if I see an H12 sweep, I got I to gotta respect it. So uh, just like the H12 sweep here generated this short trigger, I'm looking for something potentially here as well. 
So I think you could go ahead and, you know, or at least I'm personally going to be looking to fade a move up into here. Um, and uh, I will look to short that. Invalidation is above that high. Uh, and I'll target into here. We've got a bunch of lows here. Some like engineered liquidity, some trend line liquidity, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I'll probably take a punt on that short if given. Uh, and if I get stopped out, I get stopped out. Um, again, I'm, I, I think the next explosive price leg, so the next price leg with displacement, the next price leg that has some oomph behind it, right? I'm talking one of these types of price legs, right? Or one of these types of price legs, an expansionary price leg. I personally think the next expansion is to the downside, okay? So I'm willing to take shots. Even if I get stopped out, I'm willing to take a couple stop outs because if when we do get the leg down, if I am correct, of course, um, it's going to be an expansionary leg and it's going to cover those losses and more. So that's kind of what I'm looking at here. We got the H12 sweep. I'll see if we come up here and potentially uh, punt a short. And, and, and I'm looking for the lows here. I'm looking for uh, the 50%, all of these lows to get wiped. And then ultimately, I am looking for down here. Now, we could go up the bullish scenario that i see would be basically this is kind of your accumulation we get a manipulation spike higher and then we get our distribution leg lower right so you get your a m d okay so it's accumulation manipulation distribution right and if that's going to play out well guess what that manipulation leg which might send us above all of these highs here that's the one I'm looking to fade. So if I get stopped out here, guess what? I will take the shot again. Because if I think that the, the AMD fractal, right, is going to play out with a big move to the downside, right? Manipulation, distribution. I'm willing to take a couple shots trying to catch this manipulation leg because the distribution leg is going to be juicy. It's going to be worth the squeeze. So that's kind of my game plan for now. And, um, you know, if we get another push up, guess what you're going to see on Twitter? You're going to see a bunch of people saying, I told you to buy the dip. You stupid bears. I told you to buy the dip. You should have bought the dip. You didn't buy the dip. I bought the dip. Uh, and you're dumb. I'm not. You're wrong. I'm right. That's what you're going to see. And you see a bunch of people proclaiming they're along from here, like the peak of low. Um, and that would line up very well with... Um, you know, a lower high uh, type of sentiment wise. So maybe we get that push up. Maybe it's just a here and it's shallow. But either way, someone on Twitter is going to tell you they told you so. Hey, it might even be me. Um, so that's kind of what I'm watching for here. Okay, pretty straightforward game plan. Just want to get you guys a uh, get you guys an update. Um, you know, I could probably do one of these a day, maybe even I don't know. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll see what we can do. Um, and uh, yeah, let's wait and see. Timeline wise, honestly, I, I would love to see, you know, what, whether, whether it's another leg up or not, I would love to see the bottom form in mid to late March. And then, you know, by April, we're, we're uptrending again. That would be my, my ideal scenario here. Mid to late March, early April bottom, uptrend going into the halving in May. Uh, is my prediction. Could be wrong, don't care. Gonna trade it both ways and get lots of things right and wrong in between. Um, and that's what it is, baby, that's trading. So we'll wait and see what happens here. It's been slow, it's been a little bit boring. Um, you know, like I said, take advantage of this downtime, whether it be working on your edge, watching content, um, you know, back testing, forward testing, journaling, reviewing pe previous trades. Maybe you just need a break. Get outside, go ski, snowboard, surf, touch grass, talk to a girl, whatever you got to do. Uh, reset your mind because when things get crazy again, you're going to want to have that mental uh, sharpness uh, that only comes from being well rested and being able to lock in. Um, and again, yeah, don't let the fucking the, the way you know that most of the people who have you know, are, are able to only trade up trends. You can tell who they are. It's because anytime price goes up, there are the first people on the timeline trying to talk shit to bears. And then as soon as there's any sort of pullback, I start getting real scared. And it's like, well, bro, I thought you were long from here. 
Like, why are you stressed about some pullback up here, you know, if you're long from fucking 20K? You know what I mean? It's because they're not. Um, but uh, anyways, that's kind of my game plan. So we'll wait and see. Lots of stuff hopefully coming for YouTube. I'm going to do my best to stick to that. I really honestly much prefer this type of interaction and this community over Twitter. Uh, I find Twitter to just be a little bit toxic and can drain me sometimes. Uh, whereas here, I feel like the stuff I share is just a little bit more appreciated. Um, and uh, it's just easier for me to kind of get my point across. So I'm going to have to be on the YouTube grind, I guess, this year. That will be one of my goals. Uh, anyways, that's it. I'm going to stream tomorrow. I just didn't have the time today. So I want to get something out for you quick. Talk to you all then. Peace.